Hey guys, it's Liz. And for those of you who are new here, welcome to my channel. I'm a digital illustrator with fairly decent self-taught experience in a handful of art applications, ranging from Corel Painter, Fire Alpaca, to even recently a bit of Procreate on the iPad, but ultimately have found myself steadfast and loyal to Paint Tool Sci. In today's video, you get to listen to me go on and on about my favorite program, but really, I'm mostly going to delve into detail on what it can and cannot do when compared to the only other art program that I've used for years, the classic big boy, Adobe Photoshop. In future videos, I'll provide some more in-depth tutorials on novice to intermediate techniques for drawing, composition, and anatomy, but this one will be focused on the basics of Psy and how its brushes work compared to Photoshop. I'll be slowing down portions of my recording to real time for you to see how these tools work and by the end, top it all off with the classic speed paint. Now trust me, for those of you who have at least dabbled in Psy, like you, I know how overwhelming the UI was at first. It's foreign looking compared to Adobe and Microsoft Paint, but once you get the hang of it, I find it to be a lot easier to grasp than Photoshop. So let's get into it. Starting with Paint Tool Psy, you'll see me zoom into 100% scaling. And for some sloppy and quick line work, I find all these edges to be remarkably clean and clear in Psy. Now I use a Wacom Intuos Pro, which is just a basic drawing pad with no built-in monitor. And with the standard settings of this pencil tool, I can get super crisp and perfectly tapered pen strokes pretty much every time. Now I typically use this pencil tool for sketching, line work, and filling in large blocks of color. It's just a sturdy, reliable, thick brush that can get all these jobs done by only needing to adjust the size when need be. Now let's move forward to some blending brushes. The watercolor brush in size is pretty cool. It provides a fairly nice watery blend, almost making the colors wash over one another. I really only use this for large areas like the sky or underwater scenes to create a pretty consistent gradient before adding more detail on top with the more refined blending brush options that Sai has. Like typically, I use this marker tool for a majority of my early blending and even for my late game rendering. It adds just a bit of texture due to the shape of the brush, the sort of squared edge and faux multi-nubbed tip when doubled back on itself adds some variety in the tones with that ideal blended edge. Not too hard, not too soft. I find the way it blends to be comfortably predictable, as in the amount of color manipulation range based on the amount of pressure I give or the number of times I double back feels very natural, almost like a traditional medium. On top of that, the very subtle edges where I push to stop my movement have some variety to how much they blend. The best way I can describe the way it looks is cloud-like, with certain edges blending more softly than others. I'm going to speed this up for a second, and if there's one tool I use more than anything, it's the color picker. I always have my thumb hovering over the Alt key to pick up colors as I blend them. And the marker tool certainly provides me with the most clear and rich variety of options as I work. Now I've been trying very hard as of late to wean myself off of that pencil tool for line art and graduate to this basic brush tool with generally hard settings. I think the line art capabilities of this brush are just a tad softer and more buttery than the pencil tool and allow for subtle blending. I try to use a multitude of colors in my line work and prefer the subtle difference that this brush tool provides over the pencil. The other use I get out of this brush and pretty much the original use of it was to soft blend out colors in large areas. It's perfect for flush at its softest settings or for brushing in leaves or blades of grass and harder ones. Now the last brush I'll showcase on Paint Tool Sai is one I use very occasionally, but I feel like it was an important one to provide the best example of size limitations when it comes to texturing. If you're not familiar with how brush textures work, the application reads a black and white mask file as sort of a stamp. Unfortunately, size programming is nowhere near as complex as Adobe's, so when you brush out a texture like so, it just creates a repeating pattern. Adobe, depending on the brush, will flip, rotate, resize a pattern throughout a single stroke to make it feel at least somewhat organic in its stamping. The best way to work around this inside is by using it in very small sections, like in areas of flesh where you want a subtle texture to show or maybe to dab on a bit of roughness to some rocks or the ground. And by simply blending or blurring out edges or areas that feel like the texture is starting to look repetitive, you can make it work. Now transitioning on over to Photoshop. I wanna make this clear before we move forward. I am in no way a professional Adobe user. I learned the basics back in high school and picked up a lot of tips and tricks along the way since then. I still absolutely rely on Photoshop for many of its tools and features. So though I'd love to just poo poo it for being incredibly overpriced, taxing on my computer, and just not as intuitive or enjoyable to paint in as compared to Psy, it does have its positive moments. 
currently you're watching me rough out a similar dinky drawing as the one I made over in Scythe. I won't go into too much detail on the specifics of line art brushes in Photoshop since brush settings are incredibly complex here, but what I can show you is this nifty feature called Liquify. It allows you to warp and modify your images far more advanced than the simple transform tool which is in both Sci and Photoshop, and without compromising the clarity of your image. I can push around proportions of faces or bodies to look a little better at any point of illustrating. A lot of times I use this a few days after I'm done painting and I've given my eyes and brain a rest from staring at the image for so long. As I spoke about earlier when showcasing the limited texture options Sai has, Photoshop excels when it comes to layering textures in each stroke. Typically, you work with your primary and secondary selected colors over here on the left, blending them together to add depth to your brush strokes and applying texture and color variety with each swipe, stacking depth until you're satisfied. I honestly prefer size blending over this. It feels a lot more intuitive and fast to achieve what I'm personally looking for. But for certain types of projects where I'd love to have more texture, I'd for sure bring this file on over to Photoshop. Now, the one feature I possibly use the most from Photoshop are the color editing tools. I typically want my illustrations to feel fairly cohesive or balanced in the color scheme. Or sometimes I just want to inject a ton of warm and cool tones to totally change the mood of the image. You can see me adjusting the color balance now, trying to find a palette I like more than where I started. Next, I'll be playing around with the light and dark levels, ultimately brightening the middle and dark levels and lowering the highlights to neutralize and brighten the contrast a little bit. I will go over why and how I make these adjustments in future videos. And lastly, I'll showcase the replace color feature, selecting all the red and warm tones and replacing them with more cool and blue ones. It's a great feature that really helps you modify a lot in an image without compromising much when used effectively. I once used it to completely change the seasonal feel of a portrait from blue to orange without needing to change her hair, skin, or dress. And there you have it, just a quick comparison between the two programs that I utilize the most. There's obviously plenty of extra components that both applications have that I left out, but some things I have very little to no experience in, and others are a little difficult to break down for this particular video. I'm hoping that when you watch some of my speed paints now, particularly the slower ones, you can see which tools I'm using when and how I use them as the picture progresses. I've chosen to recreate a scene from my favorite Ghibli film, Castle in the Sky, and I've made the time lapse only eight times faster than real time, so you can follow along a little easier. It's definitely not my best work, but it works for this video. And with that, I hope you enjoy the speed paint. If you have any suggestions for future videos or questions about how I work, please comment them below. And if you like my videos and want to see more in general, liking and subscribing is the best way to let me know that. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.